Disruptors and Curious Minds, welcome to another episode of Thinking on Paper, where we get to talk to uh, people building the next version of the world, ask them about it, figure out how to tie us to what's going on today, and figure out why we should even care about it. My name's Jeremy. This is Mark. This is Mark over here, uh, and uh, we're excited about today, man. We're it's a, it's a, it's an interesting intersection. Uh, it's definitely where culture meets tech, because yes. uh, politics is part of our culture, um, fortunately or unfortunately. And uh, so is tech and technology is part of how we move through the world, right? Um, Mark wrote a piece about uh, this topic uh, a bit ago. And I went through it, Mark. I thought it was really interesting how you highlighted some stuff. What are you excited to dig into today even more with our guests? Well, let's say the word deep fakes, the word Ugh. itself. We're talking about deep fakes and the word I don't know. I, I think of smoking man in the X Files. I think of government subterfuge and trust nobody. Actually, although the term deep fake to refer to the, the it was actually from a Reddit channel. Apparently, uh, the the thing I could find from like 2017, there was a, a someone on a Reddit channel called Deep Fake. He was posting videos, and that's where the term came from to refer to created, doctored, changed videos. Um, yeah, there. We call this show the politics of deep fakes. We're going to talk about deep fakes beyond politics, so culture, entertainment, marketing, like the the, the non nefarious use cases of AI and created video. But against the backdrop of within the next twelve months, let me get this correct, more than two billion citizens from fifty countries will go to the ballot box. There are general elections or presidential elections in the UK, Indonesia, El Salvador. India at the moment, Mexico, Pakistan, and I believe America. Something There's a little America election as well. Little election coming up, yeah. That um, good gracious. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this yeah, so let's um, let's uh, let's kind of dig in. I think that the, the big thing I want to think about as we as we talk to our guests today is the idea that you know, the human brain. We we had a great episode uh, last week with a with a with a brilliant man that talked about you know how the brain works and how external things influence the brain and our decision making and that sort of thing and and when we see something it's hard to unsee it as humans right yeah. and it becomes part of our knowledge base part of our collection and just like a like when a judge says hey this comment needs to be stricken from the record we can say that we can say something is fake but you know humans still remember that and there's like an after effect of that 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 I'm interested in exploring um, that side of the fence, but also the tech behind everything. So without, before we get into it, some folks that are not fake, we'd like to thank our, our sponsor, Ripple, W-R-I-P-P-L-E, one of the most real on-demand marketing talent platforms. Uh, these guys are great if you need to flex out. You got a project, you got a capability you're trying to, to bolster up within your organization. These guys are amazing over 3,000 vetted solopreneurs in various disciplines. And what these guys are very good at is stacking teams of interdisciplinary experts and then pointing them at your project, aligning it with your KPIs and your goals. W-R-I-P-P-L-E dot com. Check them out. Mark, let's bring on our guest. Yeah, our guest this week is Sentil Nayagam. He's the head of Meonium Studios. Now, a few weeks ago, months ago, there was a, a deep fake that was brought to life. Um, Center will explain more about it, but essentially his company brought back a man called Muthelma Karuniande, who's the former leader of the Davida Manetra Kazakhstan party, and they brought him back for a book launch. And it caused some waves and brought some attention to deep fakes. And he's going to tell us all about it and his view for the technology in the future. Right now, welcome to the show, Sentil. Pleasure to have you. Thank you. Uh, so I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Glad you're here. Why don't Why don't we start? So in in our in our pre chat, we we talked about kind of how you got into some of this stuff and how you are, uh, you uh, you learn things like development and 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 a lot of other creative issues by just jumping in and learning them yourself. So give us give us a little bit of a starting point. You're driven by curiosity. I know our listen listeners are driven by curiosity as well. Give us a little background on how you got to. Uh, this this project and using AI to generate content. Uh, let me give me some my background. Okay, uh, my dad worked in uh, Indian Air Force. Uh, I lived across India, so India is a large country with a lot of population. Uh, we are nearly one point five billion people. That's a population we have. Okay, this year we're going to have elections. 
uh, nearly nine uh, nine sixty million people. That's nearly a billion people. That's about three times the population of America is going to vote in next uh, sixty days. That's the timeline happening. Uh, I since I lived across India, India also has a lot of languages. So that's how uh, the system works. It's like twenty five uh, official languages or something or more. Twenty two official languages and about uh, over thousand dialects. Wow. So every few kilometers of people might speak in a different style, right? Like you have some southern uh, like uh, English is there, probably somewhere how in the coast people speak are different, right? We have over thousand variants uh, among the twenty languages. Yeah, that's a we, we, that's a lot of uh, combination we can work on. How uh, how just sorry on how different are the dialects? How different are the languages? If you go across India, do you understand twenty uh, percent? Like, um. Okay. Uh. I am I'm from a place called Chennai uh, in India. It's in South India. Uh, in Tamil Nadu is where the Tamil language predominantly spoken. Uh, there are about six variants of it. So there will be Irish English, there's a British English, there's a Canadian mixed French kind of thing. There's a lot of variation. Okay, if you're adjoined to a French and they, they mix that part. Okay, or somebody who's recently migrated to uh, let's say uh, US, right? Uh, they they will speak the net. Uh, English in their native accent. That's a you you see variants of it. Something similar happens in India as well. And sometimes they will have a different word for uh, same things, right? So that kind of thing happens. Anyway, so that's a different part. So uh, India is very diverse in that part. Uh, so another thing is uh, India is highly competitive. So uh, middle class, right? Nearly everybody believes they are middle class. Nobody believes they are rich. Nobody believes they are poor. And everybody has to fight for the resources. Okay. Uh, if I have to get an opportunity, I have to study hard. That's the only way to get away from poverty. Get away. So, uh, so that's what we have been taught. Uh, my grandparents would be done doing the same thing. My parents have done the same thing, and uh, I'm doing part. And uh, that's what. Uh, so uh, I wanted to go to uh, a very top college. Let's be called IIT, Indian Institute of Technology. Uh, but uh, the, for every one seat, nearly thousand people apply. So chance of probability is very very low. So nearly one percent or less than one percent is one the it's, it's tougher than MIT and other other uh, universities at least for Indian population part. Uh, I'm I'm talking about thirty years back when I was trying it. Okay, now they have opened more uh, slightly easier now than ever, but that's our. So I didn't get into that college. So I could have done something else. That was how uh, it was there, and uh, I was trying a lot of random things. Okay, so I realized uh, like I'll tell you guys okay, so until I finish my high school, I have not touched a computer. I've heard of it. Uh, my school had only one computer, and uh, I was the uh, class leader. Okay, so I'm the uh, leader for that part. But even I was not allowed to touch it. Only the teacher would touch it because something breaks. So that that was how India was 30 years back. Okay, so from there, so after finishing at 17, 18 is what uh, I moved to some place. I said, okay, I'm not doing any college. What else I can do? So I said, I will do some uh, computer course where I can learn randomly different different things. I didn't understand why these things matter or work. But I was curious, and that's how I got into computers. I learned a lot of random skills, and uh, then uh, within few one or two years, so they were ninety six, ninety seven. Uh, I saw internet, and it kind of uh, it fundamentally changed my opinion about everything. Okay, so when you type something on a browser and you type something, and this request goes to US and comes back, uh, at that point of time in India, uh, most people did not have access to a, 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 a telephone. Uh, not mobile phone, telephone itself was a pretty rare commodity. Uh, less than one percent of people had telephones at that point of time. Uh, so, and uh, long distance phone calls were very costly. Like, my mom would actually write a script, okay, this is the 10 things I want to tell uh, because we are staying in different places. She will have a script and I can't interrupt her. She will <laughs> finish it off. This is my list because the meter is counting way more process. We will not have phones, we have to use a public uh, booth, right? So, it's a kind of coin machine or so she has to finish the part, then I will get one minute to say what the idea or opinion is. And that's all. And here you type something and suddenly you open yahoo.com and it goes, went to US, request came back and image load everything. I said, yeah, this is fascinating. And then I realized uh, somebody else said, okay, hey, there's a guy called uh, uh, Sabir Bhatia. He sold Hotmail to Microsoft and made a lot of money. Oh, you can make money also. That See, in India, we didn't have credit cards. Uh, we had so many things we didn't have. I saw internet and I was totally fascinated. I said, okay, this is the area which I want to do. I, I believe this is what I find an opportunity and I should spend the rest of my life using internet. That's how I chose and I was kept doing it. Uh, I realized I can get a job in a small uh, internet cafe uh, so that I get internet for free. 
it's like joining a McDonald's or you can eat burger for free, right? That was what my approach was. So I got introduced for free and uh, I was learning with it. And my uh, dad was uh, up, we had this Kargil war, India Pakistan war. After that, my dad uh, retired and he said, You don't do a college, your money is with me. What do you want to do? I said, I, The only thing I, I knew at that point of time was for 18 or 19 was uh, I knew how to uh, use internet. I said, Okay, let's open an internet cafe. And uh, not in the main city or town because uh, real estate is costly. So we went to a small, a uh, tire two town. Uh, it should be the same. Uh, yes, suburb kind of thing. Right? We, we went about a couple of kilometers from Chennai. Uh, we opened a small place and uh, I was doing it. So I got access to, uh, I have I bought multiple computers. Uh, I learned how to assemble them, how to network, connect them, how do they work on it, and learn everything on it. So I, I think 2001, I think there's a MIT opened up their course where all content in some way. Uh, whatever was available, like knowledge was publicly available in a lot of places. Good ones and bad ones, everything was available. Okay, how to make a bomber, how to... Uh, cook or how to learn science or source code, everything is available. And at that point, piracy also was way ahead, right? You would have various sites, right? You can go and download any software, download it, and they'll give you serial numbers. You can try it. Books were available in PDF format or in the CHM bar, whatever, help format. So, like, I moved to digital books about 20, 25 years back. I got into learning part of okay? here. So, physically buying books, uh, like, see, in India, also, homes were smaller. They're not huge homes, okay? So you can't have, uh, we didn't have a, let's say, a basement or a, a garage. We didn't have a car. So uh, so we can't store these things. So guys will not get much space and home. So we had to try other areas to work on it. So digitally was easier. I can go and read at 18, 19, whatever. You, you want to read porn, you want to read books, you want to write technology, whatever I can. Go download it, comics, whatever I missed in my uh, teenage early age. I tried to fetch all the part. All the knowledge was available. I said, I was reading everything. So that's, way. So that's how I, I got a lot of things. I figured a lot of things. Okay, oh, then I said, okay, how does the websites work? Can I build a website? What do you require for it? Then I said, okay, there's a little HTML is required. Then you need a server. Uh, and how do the servers do login and other things? Okay, they need to have a lot of programming on server. Okay, what does it come in? And uh, do I have to pay money for it? Money is not paid. It's called open source. Okay, well, what is open source? Go and learn that part. What is the technology on the? Uh, if you get a machine, you'll get to use some code for it. And uh, what else is available for free on that machine? And uh, that was uh, well, PHP was a language. I'm talking about 2001, 2002 period, and the, they had something called PHP, uh, they had something called uh, MySQL, and you had to learn something on it. Okay, learn this programming language. You would go try, build something on it. Are you building something valuable? That's what uh, I was doing. So I was way ahead of what my uh, people, other people in India were doing at that point. Right? And only thing is because uh, I had internet, uh, I was an introvert. Even now I'm an introvert, but I have well, figured out how to uh, talk well. That's what I've done over a period of time. Uh, I had have a girlfriend, I had have anybody else. So I, all my time, if somebody said, and in those days, we didn't have a, uh, let's say, a broadband connection or a, a fiber optical. So we would have a, a telephone based, right? Dial up modem we used to use for it. And if I use it, then it will cost me money because the telephone bills were high in those days. Okay, that's what today is like. So if somebody is using internet, I can parallel connection, I can put another computer, I can run those things for free. So if somebody is there, I'm very busy. Okay, wait, I could download something, I could read something, I could create something. So I got into that mode pretty well. And that's how uh, I got into programming, okay. Uh, then uh, I was the only son. Uh, so a couple of years later, my parents said, okay, uh, I was so bad. I, I, I didn't have a girlfriend. I can't uh, get married by myself. So my mom said, hey, we can get you a girl for you. So we had an arranged marriage. I had an arranged marriage. Uh, she was working in a school. And uh, and this was all going fine in some way. And uh, suddenly... Uh, Okay, once you get married, you also expect a kid, right? But within a year, we had a expecting a first kid. And at that point, uh, things stuck to me, okay? I wa grew up in, because of my dad's part, I've lived in good cities or other places. I'm doing it. I'm staying in a small town, okay? What kind of life I can give to my daughter? So that once a thought comes into your mind, then you can take action. Oh, I have a lot of skills which I've built over a period of time last couple of years. What if I can monetize it in some way? That's what I said, okay? And... Uh, after my daughter was born, uh, I moved to Bangalore. Uh, I got a job in a small company. Uh, I can't apply to any... See, even if I have all the skills which are required, I, in India, graduation is a mandatory thing. You can't even apply to large companies. There are big companies in Bangalore. So I said, okay, I'll go to a small company who will, uh, where I can solve some real problems and uh, then deliver. it. That's what uh, I tried doing it. Uh, I have worked at a company and uh, I learned that part and uh, spent some more time, new technologies, and within two years, I realized maybe I'm too smart for what people are doing because at that point, internet was not very well known, right? So 
uh, you have to hire somebody from out of fresh of the college uh, who has never used internet. They will have an email account. They will not use it on a daily basis. But I was using uh, internet on a daily basis because I had running an internet center and I was kind of yeah. very curious. That's the whole part, right? I would teach people how to use internet and then it is up how to write programming, how to write code, and then uh, get a project from US or some other part and then deliver on it. So the whole cycle is it. Why am I doing it for somebody else? Why can't I do it for myself? That's how uh, I became a, a software uh, I had a company in 2006. That's, yeah, so, so the awesome. power of curiosity. Seriously, that's like rooted in all the stuff that we talk about on the show. It's rooted in a lot of what I do personally, right? And you have the curiosity. You go and find out how to do things. But more point, you mentioned you're teaching people a lot on how to use stuff, and you learn things better when you teach it. So you've got this, you've built up this uh, internal capability to understand new technologies and apply it in interesting ways that, that point back to what you want to do. So let's jump ahead into this, like, okay, you you now see this confluence of technologies that are out there that can help you uh, bring someone back from the dead, essentially, right? So let's let's talk about that project specifically and, you know, why you decided to do it and what you thought after you you put it out there what were your, what do you thought about the results okay uh, let's go back two years back 2022 uh, i was doing another startup which was into movie space uh, buying and selling of movies is what we are working on we, we are something on blockchain itself is what we were trying to do uh, at that point a couple of uh, innovations were launched in the market uh, one was a tool called dali uh, which was an open ai tool uh, where you can type one line of text and it can generate an image as a programmer, we know we type a lot of content, a lot of text we can do, and it's easy for us to generate. Uh, writing text is easy, but generating images or creating images or taking a photograph, it would be a lot more effort. In it. Suddenly, it was kind of cool in some way. Okay, maybe a new innovation by a big company which has raised a lot of money. This is one part of it. A uh, few weeks later, I realized there's another startup uh, at the same time they've done it. It's called Midjourney. Five, six people, it's an open source. It's not open source, but a small team of people, and they are building also image part. Oh, okay, something else is also happening. So you have to look at, say, I'm good at generally predicting the next trends. That's what I mean. So I realize it's no more. See, if, if it happens one time, it's an accident. Second time, it's a coincidence. And third time, uh, it's son of God's will in some way. You can see, hey, this is a trend. And you can't stop it. And within a few weeks of mid see, I saw a stable diffusion dropping. There's a guy from UK, uh, MR, and other things. They're running called stability and stable diffusion. Whatever these com billion dollar company has built, somebody's open sourcing that part. And why is he doing it? So this was one part of it. Then I had access to another thing. There's something called GitHub Copilot, which can write code. And uh, whether in November, December, we hit, uh, we had this chat GPT coming into play, right? December 1st, 2022, I think that's the time. Right? And what I did was, okay, uh, generally I'm good at predicting and I will have some notice or time frame to uh, learn this skill. I realized AI is growing very, very fast. And uh, the only way I can catch up would be, say, I I'm in mid-40s now, so... Uh, uh, I can't do 16 hours, 18 hours work anymore. I can't drink Red Bull or a lot of caffeine work. It's not work. I can spend a couple of hours dedicatedly. Okay, that's what. Uh, the only way I can do is if I stop doing everything else and focus on only one thing. And that's the way I can do. And I realized, okay, I built a software company earlier and I have a lot of people working for it. I realized uh, if AI can, like after a few notice in the news part, uh, when ChatGPT was announced, uh, all the product companies, right, uh, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, everybody is firing employees. And that trend is happening and we realize every quarter people are being fired because uh, they're becoming redundant and some VA is getting better and better. So I, I had that kind of thing as well. If I create a software company using AI, it may not work. Not the right approach. Or everybody who's going to go, go out of job or they won't build their own company, everybody's going to go to the programming part. I said, maybe I should try what nobody else will try. So do something which nobody will think of. Right? That's what I think I was doing. I said, my passion is movies. I've done some work on movies. I knew popular statements in the movie part. Let me do something which in the movie part itself. So we could generate images. If we can do a lot of images consistently, that's what a video is. Uh, we can also add the audio part. And thing is, uh, first part I said, okay, in India, this is not very well known. Can I create awareness about AI? That's what I was to do. Uh, a new movie was coming uh, in uh, last year, around July, August. Thing. The movie was uh, it's called Jailer. Uh, there's a big uh, hero in Tamil it's called uh, Rajni Khan. Uh, and uh, the movie is coming, and the movie has, in India movies, there will be a dance and song which will be there, and that will trend among a lot of people. So I did two things. Uh, we did a replaced one, one dance sequence. Uh, I replaced the actress with another actress from yesteryears. I, I added that part. 
and it was so real because both were good dancers. People believe the next uh, the replaced version was the original one because that's what the first they saw it. And uh, people believe this version. Though uh, I have posted on Twitter, uh, I had about a couple of thousand followers, not large. But that video did about 2 million views on my Twitter account. Without putting any watermark, without uploading in YouTube, no Instagram, only in Twitter, it, it did about 2 million views. And all, it was kind of uh, curious what is happening with that part. And within 2 weeks later, uh, we did another part. Okay, the movie had a, a father, son and grandson kind of sequence. Was there a song will happen at that part? All the emotions in India we have. Like we don't have a separate music industry. Film also have songs, right? We have uh, multimodal entertainment, right? For us, we did a hero plus singing. So uh, the song was great, but I felt the song suited more to the son, not to the father. That's the hero which we all know. And this hero's older movies all had a other singer who was singing the song part. It's called SP Balasubramaniam. SPB we call it. And this guy died during COVID. Now, uh, amazing singer, but then he's not no more available. So can we reselect that part? That's what I tried, and uh, that also worked very well. But what happened was, uh, media said, okay, raised a lot of questions, okay, hey, ethical parts of it, uh, what will deep fix, will do all kind of thing. So they're coming. I did two separate videos and one separate audio, separate video, and we done a lot of images. That's what uh, we were working on. But people put things together, and uh, at that point onwards, uh, I've had some inquiries from some political parties or movies. Uh, the people who have died in some way, they have not done the recording for the song or video, so I think it's pending part. Can you help us solve it? Uh, so, a lot of ran random inquiries were happening from there and uh, that's how we did okay we did some work for some movies uh doing this is what we're working for uh but we had a chennai had a flood uh, period in december uh, last year right so somebody whom i knew approached us okay there's a book launch happening and they want to bring back a particular leader. and by the time i was doing something on movie space i said i can create high quality content i'm not here to do low quality content i can create high quality content the close-up zoom and whatever it can we re recreate the person so I had to clone the person. Uh, this is a, a politician who had died actually, and uh, uh, he died when he was 95 year old. So there is no point of reselecting a 95 year old person, okay? And we do a 60 year version of eight person of that part, uh, because at least he, at that age he could speak very well, he could uh, express himself very well. He had a mannerism, everything with that dialogue. So we had to get the script from people. His all this previous content was published in books in some ways. Somebody wrote the proper script in a particular word. So this is a script which is given to us. I said, okay, how animations work? So let's create a script, then we create an audio version of it, and then clone the voice, apply it up, clone the voice to it, create it. Then you have to create a, a video version of it. How animation work? Right? So you create an audio first, then you create animation to match that. So let me, can, can I stop you real quick? So um, so before we before we go on, so this, this particular politician in this particular book launch, was the book launch, uh, was it the son of the politician that had the book launch, or what? Okay, so I, I will come in. Okay, so uh, the book was written by, uh, uh, think of it like, uh, it's a, we call it MP, right? So, m Member of Parliament. Uh, it's probably you have, you have two houses, right? So, lower house, upper house. So that's yep. how it comes to play. Okay. Uh, this guy has written four books, and this year was a hundred centi or centenary year of that politician. He has died, but it's a hundred year. The whole year is being celebrated in some way. And, uh, they want to publish four books on his politics and other things is what they're being published, okay? And the chief guest is that politician's son, who is the current uh, chief minister of uh, Tamil Nadu. That's how... Uh, so, okay, so the reason, uh, yeah, so the reason for my question was, like, you, there were there was some family permission or, like, related to, hey, we're okay with you creating this thing of my father, right? There was that step that was taken care of? Uh See, when you are a pioneer in some way, you can actually get away at least one or two times, right? So, uh, idea was, okay, hey, this is was created for the politician and his son is going to do it. And it's all, uh, here the father is talking about his son and everything in a, in a very positive note. Okay? So, it was, a uh, uh, that's how, what the whole purpose of the video itself. It's an eight-minute video. Uh, it talks in a good voice and language, everything, but uh, reasonably accurate uh, version of the video. We have done that part. And the... Uh, uh, I didn't expect. See, my assumption was see, this, these are videos, which are internal political videos. Right? For an event, they will cover it. Maybe some, how many people will see it? Have no idea that part. But what happened was because the uh, chief minister, it's like equal to a state governor of a state, right? If governor of a state, uh, his father comes and talks about him, right? So, like we have, uh, like you currently Kennedy is there, right? So, uh, maybe John Kennedy is uh, brother of his son is what is Robert Kennedy. Right? So, uh, if his video is being brought today and he makes a speech, Okay, we elect him as uh, uh, prime minister or president of America, right? That will uh, 
have an impact on certain set of voters. It's, it's, it's a curious factor that happens, okay? It, that, that, that content was live streamed on multiple television channels and YouTube channels. And the videos, separate videos available became available. And I didn't expect this to go that viral. That's the whole part. We didn't expect that. Okay, it was a reasonable content. We did a good work on that part. And, but yeah, uh, it, it worked very well. Yeah, and there's this, uh, it, it, like you said earlier, you know, when you're on the front end of something and you're testing something, it's kind of like, you know, the forgiveness versus permission, right? And you kind of push something out there and then kind of say, all right. So, the, so, but it sounds like there was a little tie in from, from, from the family a little bit, but that makes it really interesting, right? Because you have, you have pictures, you have videos that are, that are captured in moment, uh, captured likeness in a moment in time, right? That, that are out there, right? But now you're taking the ingredients of the person and creating a new moment in time. Like, how do you, how do we navigate the ethical uh, responsibilities in, in that regard? Uh, okay, life is slightly easier today now. Okay, so let's talk about the, I will give you reference of one movie. Let's start with, okay, which people in America, okay, Forrest Gump. Okay, Forrest Gump. So Forrest Gump was a, uh, was a fictional movie, uh, but you will see uh, at least American presidents are being shown, okay, different important scenes in the whole life of America. There is, Tied up in, in a particular story of a, a slightly uh, below a average IQ person uh, who works hard and runs and runs. That's the whole thing which comes into play. Right? So there's something like that. We, we are, this is synthetic. Okay? No, nobody was saying, okay, this is a real video is what we are saying. Uh, the intention was great. Uh, book publishing and the father wishing a son uh, and uh, talking about the politics. That's what the, the story was about. I had anything against it. Okay, it was not not against a video. Okay, I'm not getting. Okay, hey, don't vote for this person. He's a, he's a positive messaging was what was there okay and this party was built by this person so uh, so the party was asking for it uh and uh think of it republicans are asking for it or let's say uh, or uh, democrats are asking for it uh, can we get a video for it those should be possible okay. can we bring john f kennedy back probably on a video we can deliver it to it uh technology is available for it can we break let's say uh 80 uh, said uh, who's the president uh reagan star wars yeah reagan oh. in america reagan America, America. Uh, Ronald Reagan, yes. Ronald Reagan, okay. So if, what if we can bring in Ronald Reagan? Okay, Ronald Reagan, not the older version, can we bring the younger version? Right, so compete, right? So equal age, because they're very old price, that time. but if you can bring the relevance to it in some way, and that would be an interesting watch for people. So there's something like that, okay. Uh, my part, so I think, is it positive? That's how we started. So do you think it's the context then? Okay, because I watched Oppenheimer last week and yeah, they had Einstein, they had Oppenheimer, they had the president. Okay, they recreate these people. They're dead. Okay, we, we get to see them on the screen. Yes. Because yes. the context and the the reasoning for that is not nefarious. It's entertainment. It's portrayed in a good light or in the light of art. Do, are you saying that if the intentions are honorable that's different to if the intentions are nefarious or yeah so yeah i, I have in the first part okay see elections are also entertainment all the news channels are filled with this kind of content so that's sure, also, yeah. like, sure. aware in some way a lot of people are spending money on it uh whatever is happens for movies is what they're doing with the elections so this is one part of it second part uh see people at least the younger generation people who are between say 13 to 25 and people about 18 is what they can vote okay uh, this generation in uh, last 10 years have seen uh, Musical.ly, then TikTok, then uh, uh, Instagram Reels and YouTube for a short form set. They've seen this content. Their attention span is as uh, low as, as a, let's say, uh, a goldfish, right? So you need to seconds. have some content seconds. to target them. How do you hold their attention? Right? So if you see, what's the, uh, okay, there's a book called uh, uh, Purple Cow, I think said Gordon wrote it in 2003, I think I read it at that point of time. So, and normal cows are boring, okay? but something is purple cow, people want to take a selfie with it, take an Instagram, they will share it, and that goes viral, right? So, politicians speaking on their speech is okay, but you have bring back something, and yeah, this is called a trend for now, and uh, that's a value add for, okay? Uh, again, we are doing beyond that. So, now the gap, see, uh, this time uh, India is far ahead in terms of election rigging, okay? So, uh, we have gone into its uh, personalized canvassing for elections, okay? So when we have a content, we'll say, hey, hi, Jeremy, uh, I'm Sendil from your name, or I'm, I'm the politician who's standing election for you. Uh, elect me. 
I'm going to use call your name. Uh, if you know you are in this base in this area, let's say Atlanta or you are in New York, I will say, hey, I am this, and I have done these these work uh, which should have helped your life in a better way. Very targeted content, and uh, we also have information. Okay, are you a graduate or not graduate? Are you employed or a housewife? What are the skills you have? So literally, we are building a whole script, and I'm not the only one who's doing it. There are several other people are doing it. And then expect this kind of thing that happening in US in the next uh, few months. But then you have big elections. You're going to see targeted individual part. And that will have uh, the politician will come into play, plus the voice, plus lip sync. And he will speak your name. In the first five seconds, if he calls your name and you like the politician, you will remember that ad. Some ad which plays on some TV channels, you will not remember it. That's the whole thing which comes into play, right? That's a that's super. A, it's a real. It's a really good point. Um, on that is the personalization of it, right? Because the scale celebrities are doing this uh, already right now. They're automating, you know, chatbots of themselves and providing people acts like their their fans have this community and they can talk to. I don't know, pick a celebrity. I don't know who has one, but people do. Yeah. And you're. It, it seems like you're interfacing with the celebrity, but you're not really interfacing with the celebrity. So that some of that stuff is out there. The thing that the thing that freaks me out a little bit is that um, when we tie it back to like our psychology and our biology, and we're reading a book right now in our book club called Clear Thinking by Shane Parrish that talks about these defaults that are pre-programmed into us as humans, right? And you know you can't really you can't really purge them you just have to navigate when they come up and know when they're know when they're pushing you in a wrong direction but all right so you have you have someone that has a belief and mm -hmm. their confirmation bias is what it's called right so they have a belief and they're looking for information out there that makes their viewpoint valid in their mind so i you know in mark's article there was a uh, a video of uh, of nancy pelosi and they slowed her language down and they depitched it and it made her sound hammered, made her sound drunk, right? And yeah. so the people that are weird, I think. I think last elections. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and I saw that, and I was like, wow, that really makes her look not awesome, right? So so then the people who are opposite her are pointing to that, and being like, hey, see, I'm right, kind of thing. So man, it is such a it is yeah, a fine line to yeah. And but hyper personalization goes beyond that because if, for example, you can have. Um, E either nomination who know for some reason they know my youtube browsing history they know what i'm angry about they know what i'm happy about they know what i'm skeptical about so then if it's hyper personalized then donald trump or biden can come on my screen and go mark don't you just hate it when xyz and i go yeah i do how did you know that and i agree with you and i will vote for you and and, and that's the nefarious scary part of it. well i was thinking right? shouldn't take one out okay, uh See, targeting all 300 million people, Americans, actually doesn't, it doesn't matter, okay? There are only some swing states, right, which determine. California will always vote for Democrats, and uh, Texas will always vote. So you already have decided that part. There's no more, okay? The idea is, what are the new voters? How are they going to, okay? People uh, who have not decided yet, undecided voters will determine. You know, one vote, few votes, a few percentage swing can change the election. That's how we see it, okay? So what uh, we would say is, uh, what is important for them? Is it a news? Why would they remember you? And at what point should they do okay? Uh, one day before election, two day before election, on election day, what could be done? Could be automated call be done and say, hey, go vote. Uh, don't forget to vote. Don't think of it. Like, uh, uh, so if you forget to vote, right? You believe my party will win. I'm a candidate will and you forget to vote. Then one vote is lost. So America is far ahead of how the... Uh, uh, let's see, election strategists work and how data, data is being built for it. That's better than that part. But India is catching up with that product. But one thing is, now we are targeting this uh, a, a, like a hyper personalized content. We say, okay, hey, one person targeting only one specific voter. Can you uh, see? You have to do two things, okay? One is uh, vote for me is one part of it, okay? Or create fear, and uncertainty, and doubt. What if this president is unhealthy, okay? He can't make decisions for himself. Uh, you have to get any of these three and he may not vote and he may not go for voting, right? And people have seen a lot of content in that space. Uh, but uh, what I'm saying is, okay, hey, this is a possible use case. I think there are a lot of positive use cases. Yeah. Like you have done a thousand policy decisions, okay? Uh, you have whole ministry departments uh, who, are, uh, who do a lot of these things, okay? This is what we've done for you. If somebody cares about climate, what is done for climate? A lot of this because when you have to message on a mainstream media, 
you can only have half an hour, 40 minutes speech. You want to cover a lot of things and it's boring for people. Those who have specific interest have been given this exactly what we can do. Or somebody can summarize both the uh, leaders or other leaders and say, hey, this is who is under these, these points, who is voting how. And that will people remember and that will help them make a decision quickly. That's what I said. Yes, so probably yes, so the eight voters will be out and we are saying we have undecided voters where the swing voters are going to go and uh, that will determine the election. That's how it's going to happen. So, so let's let's talk about your you're a curious mind, uh, said. So you mentioned you're driven by your curiosity. You're a you're you're a technologist. You're a programmer. You're a coordinator of technologies. Let's let's run through a thought experiment here real quick. So, so the idea with this is is all right. There is there is content. That is, there's like the three of us are live. We're real. We're we're who we are. We're not dead. We're not recreations of it. We're you know we're trusting people to understand. Never sure. Right. We're 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 tr we're trusting. I've never met you. I could physically see it until the real. Yeah, I mean, think of it. Okay, we are talking about deep fakes. Another few months, we'll have super fakes. Uh, it'd be great if Santa uh, was a big guy. Fake or not, we can't detect it anymore. No. All right. So yes. so, so here's what I thought. Not even that theory, actually. Yeah. yeah you're right. 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 So here, so here's my thought experiment. Okay, let come to come to this from a technologist perspective. So, so in a way for for people to differentiate real from not real, right? Is there? Imagine there's a way, and and you'd reference blockchain earlier. I don't know if that's the key to this or or whatever. It may be too complicated. Vitalik Buterin wrote something about it that was way too complicated. But imagine if there was a way to uh, disassemble or scramble an unauthorized use of likeness right and let's say every piece of content let's say all three of us right now have a piece of are, are part of this content but in order to participate in the content we have a key right and a key assures that that i'm me you're you mark is him and if that key isn't there on any piece of content that's out there and this is a platform driven solution right so youtube would have to agree to it like all the big platforms who put out content would have to agree to it but is that possible if someone watched a piece of this content and you guys had your keys, but I was a deep fake and I don't want any deep fake content created, you know, because I, I'm careful about who I am and what I do and how I communicate myself. Is that possible? Like, and if it is, if it, and if it isn't, and I, 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 Jeremy's explained this to me before and I, I, I don't understand it. If it isn't, what is the solution? Mm. Okay. So, uh, there's a standard called CC2P, okay? I think uh, what the uh, meta, which operates Instagram, Facebook, uh, and also YouTube, okay? they have sets on OpenAI also, okay? So if you generate a content, whatever Sora videos, which was released, right, uh, when they were announced a couple of weeks back, uh, people tried uploading the same video to YouTube and it said it's a copyrighted content, will not let you do that. Part. Okay, that's what happened then. And uh, so they're inserting some kind of... Uh, Let's say invisible watermark into the content itself in some way. It says, okay, who is a creative content? If it's a synthetic generator, or is it a natural content or it's been enhanced or modified content? So they're putting some information into it for uh, doing that part. Uh, actually, uh, creating of a uh, real believable video, all right, uh, Meta can do it uh, for Instagram or also Facebook. Also, if you remember, when they initially they had a thing called face.com, they had booked it. Uh, people have uploaded billions of emails. So, so they have, so who has the biggest training data set can generate all the content. So Facebook actually has all. They have a lot of photos, a lot of videos from children to kids to everything. They have a lot of content. Okay. YouTube is the video company where they have, uh, what, uh, petabytes of content, right? That's what they have every day, hundreds of. So they have trained on this video itself. Uh, the AI is ready, both with uh, Instagram and also for Facebook. Uh, they are not launching it. That's all. Uh, it's it's their choice, and probably because the U.S. election is what they're waiting for. Maybe after the election happens, they're going to announce it, and the big creators will get an opportunity to use their likeness or some other likeness or other content to generate that part. Okay, so but is it but is it what was the watermark going to influence how someone feels about something they watch? No, so what part? So uh, maybe you're validating okay, so where people are uploading a content which goes viral uh, because they want to get paid. Uh, Instagram gets a lot of likes of. Some currency, it's a currency, right? Likeness is a currency, attention is a currency. So people don't do it. Uh, YouTube also pays revenue in some way. So there are other ways of making uh, revenue in that part. Uh, if the revenue is cut, uh, the incentive is gone, right? If you don't have the incentive, why would you do it? Until unless you're very dedicated, you have an intention to disrupt. Okay. And how people can report other things, there's a whole bunch of things that can happen that okay. Well, uh, what I would say is 
see creating uh, ai content has become a lot more simple okay but uh, what has happened is uh, in like last year like we could anybody could get a trump image or a biden video on that part okay all the tools were allowing it uh, but once these companies are raising lot of money you get billion dollar valuations are see once you raise lot of money it's easy to sue that company us is a like uh, it's a litigation prone country right anybody can sue anything but the people say hey we are offended in some way we can go for a, a class action kind of thing so uh, once these companies raise lot of money so when have big company which are in the finance domain or you know social media they have lot of liabilities which come into play so they will have to follow certain things okay so there is some something called a politically exposed person people who are politics in some way or the key roles uh, so their faces cannot be used so this kind of regulation comes into play see i everybody has a list for it similarly money laundering other thing which come into play right? so money should be misused so these kind of rules are being put for large companies so uh, traditional large companies who are offering these services hey gen or everything you can't try upload a trump voice now when try to do something mischievous kind of it will not let you do that one or for pope or for even indian prime minister modi or indian politicians most of the photos have been uploaded you cannot uh, upload these photos anymore or video anymore that's the whole reason why people actually came to me to get the calendar last year somebody tried with those kind of tools those tools are now not allowing people to create content on the direct part right because of ethical reason the whole part is uh, regulation comes to play or legal uh, obligation may come to be okay what if uh, see in india kind of population right you create some content actually there will be riots may happen right so and it, it uh, then court or police or uh, other departments like uh, law enforcement will come into play and that has other implications so people want to prevent avoid okay i don't want to get to that mess so i will not do it in india though there are uh, thousands of startups who are getting into ai space only four startups have officially announced that we are doing some work for elections there may other people who are doing it in the and the shades or doing it in other ways but only four startups in india has said okay we are doing in ai space i'm one of the startups so i want to i want to back up just a touch and on what you said you know that that you know you incentivize behaviors that you want and if the incentive is not there the behavior goes away and except right so if there's not financial incentive to use ai to create content then you know that behavior will come down but i think it's more than just financial i think the ability to influence is yeah. is an even greater incentive and and i don't know that the and i i don't know a lot about this again you know, mark and i are relatively new to this this kind of world but um is there how do we manage that uh see uh ai is growing faster than ever okay so uh, in principle like uh, okay uh, we have never sure uh, is this person a real person or not whatever you see on social media if it's too good to be true probably it's not true right so we have to question everything is it true or not okay. another problem is people also have prejudices okay so even this is actual news you are you are sharing on a social media platform or a news channel uh, because of other reasons uh, the believability of the mainstream kind itself is very low we are saying okay you know do you have a let's say democrat pro democrat this a uh, let's say mainstream media is there the other media which is support only uh, republicans right already the division is very strong and uh, whenever they have a doubt uh, they prefer to go for uh, uh, some other group okay which is a extreme group which will talk of okay, whether bilam could be one and up at other end could be uh, uh, people who are okay uh, info war or other. they have different content okay and when they have no explanation they will also uh, let's say uh, all this okay uh, theories which comes to play okay conspiracy theories right so people we try to explain things to us and we keep uh, try to understand what is happening okay then we don't get we invent something uh, when we could understand what was god we invented god right the one part of okay, why does it rain why does it uh, mountains are there who built the trees why does shade come into play some people thought uh, some other areas other people say hey maybe like in india nearly everything on nature or i mean for in the hinduism some way uh, nature is being worshiped not some lord or so people worship trees when plants even snakes animals everything is worshiped in some places uh, because they are giving in some way so it's a assumption part so people as a we are exploration machine we try to create justification or uh, explanation for whatever content we are doing that's how uh, that does so uh, even if we are giving a real content will two people agree on the same point i doubt it this is science people will say you know science cannot be questioned whether well, everything which can be questioned is what is sciences if you don't can't question it it's not science so we can disagree on so many things that the whole thing uh, how it works right man yeah, really, <clears throat> i'm going to i'm going to bring the the the, the negative pessimist bomb onto the show and when sam olman 
goes on TV and he does an interview and he and he says, uh, Chat GPT five is coming. Nobody knows how it's working. Like the people building the 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 the, the chat GPT don't know how it comes to the conclusions that it does. They don't know how it's working. And maybe, just maybe, we're just gonna have to live with not knowing if content is real or fake. And that's the culture of our media becomes that it becomes part of it and there is no watermark there is no solution and we adapt to that new world and it's a fucking mess for a long time and eventually it becomes part of us well the well the scary the scary part about that too is is what we what we do as humans not necessarily the three of us but just human nature in general people don't like to listen and instead of listening, they're loading their rebuttal, right, to support their belief, confirmation bias, the whole nine yards. And if we're giving people wrong stuff to support potentially wrong opinions, it's just going to be easier. And it's just going to be it's just going to get noisier and louder and like yes. meaner. Yes. And, oh, how do we yes. stop it? I'm out. I don't like this. I don't like this ride anymore. I want to get off. OK, uh, where I'll go with so Kiasi, uh AI comes in different formats. One is a centralized AI, whichever you are seeing with OpenAI uh, and uh, let's say Meta doing uh, Llama, I was thinking, okay, so they are, uh, they are releasing only the models to some extent, not all the models. And this is all centralized, controlled, and uh, they are trying to do a regulatory capture. Uh, we have already achieved it. Think about it, because when when uh, US did a nuclear weapons, which are open AMR, right? So US did a bomb. How many years did it took for China and India and US? Maybe five years, 10 years? And here in the AI, ChatGPT4 was as good as last March. It was great. This year, year within a year, uh, somebody, at least two, three startups up in terms of all the benchmarks. Uh, I think Cloud3 is supposed to be great. Uh, Gemini 1.5 with 1 million token uh, solves some interesting problems. Okay. And I'm expecting with them when you have WWC, DC, right? So whenever Apple is going to next announce next OS, they will talk about everything about AI. And they expect actually. Uh, Probably Sama or somebody else will be from OpenAI will be talking on the stage with uh, Tim Cook and uh, maybe the announcement will happen during that part. Okay, that's how I see things playing out. Okay. That's a drama which will be interesting for us to see. Okay. Uh, what is the opposite of centralized AI? So then we decentralize AI. So the uh, people are exploring on that part. See, uh, I have a strong feeling. Okay, so America tried blocking. Uh, see, uh, China has been copying technology right, left, right, and center for nearly everything from defense to automobiles, everything they copied, okay. And the uh, US thought uh, if they can ban access restriction to uh, big GPUs and algorithms, uh, AI, uh, China will not catch up on AI. But uh, they figured out a way to bypass it. So they have built better AIs in some way. It's as good as uh, at least what uh, American AI is doing, okay. But the challenge comes for other parts of the world. I'm, I'm in uh, India. India doesn't have a great relation with America. Yet, okay. So because... Uh, uh, U.S. always supports Pakistan, which is uh, a swan enemy for us. Also, sometimes will not uh, confront uh, China or whatever. India is involved in something okay, from border disputes, everything. Uh, so, India-U.S. relationship can go bad or can happen at any part of time. So, what my fear would be, uh, what if U.S. denies uh, restrictions uh, to India for all the AI? If, they, if you want to operate in America, you can't... Uh, give this AI access to India because a lot of people smartly pay that will build it and that might very well happen. Uh, or it could be Europe, right? Europe also says Europe don't invent anything new and they keep regulating new things, right? That's the strategy which they've taken for it. I think UK has come out in some way. What if they can do something like Switzerland and say we will be a neutral zone for AI. All uh, cool AI companies can incorporate and Britain might work as well, okay? So the counter of that part of balance would be see, each country will try to build their own AI in some way. It's like a nuclear weapons or anything, but uh, we are doing it faster. Uh, better models are coming into play. Okay. So if you see a hugging face where they have all the AI models, there are nearly half a million uh, AI models currently available. The idea is choose which one suits your need and work on it and see uh, can you get a good output. That is what I have been doing. Okay. Uh, I'm also doing something else. I'm saying, hey, can we run AI locally? I don't know, depending on some government or server to determine what I can build. Okay. Uh, like in US, you had a, uh, like you, you had a law of okay, right to bear arms, right? So that's a controversial thing, but uh, you can, I'm saying right to bear GPU should be a uh, right for people to have. Right. So I will put my own GPU because I want to. Let's pause on that. I, 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 I strongly okay. 
So I bought multiple GPUs. My machine has that part of thing. Uh, government says you can't do it, can do it. I don't care about that part. Then hey, can it solve my real problems? Can it help me improve my future? Can we change my destiny with with my own efforts? I, I'm willing to go for it. I believe there'll be millions of people around the world who will be going in that direction. And there's a new movement coming. Okay, there's something called anti-cloud movement is happening. We are seeing uh, similarly. Uh, anti -cloud starting out now. Anti-cloud movement, you said? Yes, yes, yes. So you never know. Suddenly, they can block your account. Think about you. You're, you're building a uh, let's say your subscribers on YouTube, right? You put years, and suddenly there'll be one. You have, they never give you explanation. They can ban you, right? So if this is your primary source of revenue or income, whatever, right? if they block you, you you're gone. You have to reset from start from zero. Okay. See, uh, uh, have you do you watch uh, Black Mirror? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so nearly all the Black Mirror episode in some form are theoretically possible as of today. We speak. Uh, we can go episode by episode. And say, hey, this is possible today. Yeah. Can we get a deep fake in some way? Can we modify it in some way? Uh, can we have a credit score? Like, can we have a social score? And the score can we reset in some way. Right? Every episode, we can actually say and see what AI has done till now and where we are going. In a few weeks, a few months, a few years, we'll be hitting those benchmarks. I'm looking over on the okay. Can we build something like her? Right. And the her movie, they have a, uh, a phone. AI lives on the computer and can talk. Right. My fear is if I get used to it, if I've been denied access to it, that's a problem for me. Not getting it was a different part. Now everybody has it and I get denied to it. Uh, I want to make sure I don't get into that part and I want to build my own AI. That's why I'm running this hard upon. Uh, and I'm also promoting, okay, I'm not raising any funding till now. Uh, we work on the services and we're keeping it uh, very low on that part. But I'm saying is, hey, can you buy your own servers? Can you run these models yourself? Whatever serves your need, uh, from writing content to doing research to the law or writing code, uh, whatever you do can be automated. Okay. And the next step after this would be, uh, we'll be, see, from Jetsons onwards, we are talking about uh, people having living in space and rockets and a lot of robots at home. We have seen so many uh, cartoons and series and everything which had, okay, we never got into that part because robots uh, were good at repeatable stuff, but among humans, it was difficult. Now, at least you've seen a lot of people are driving Tesla cars on roads. Uh, and the accident it's going down in some way. Something similar will happen. We'd have humanoid robots coming into play. And these AI, which are which can understand, listen, talk to in some way, they can control or manage them. So another two, three years, we'll see a lot more robots in the market. I think uh, Elon Musk is building Optimus, right? So that's a version which were uh, uh, behaving like human in some sense. Figure, uh, figures uh, building uh, figures building some stuff right now too. That uh, uh, Xiaomi is building, yeah. a lot of the companies are building in yeah. some way. There are small versions of it in some way, but... I'm saying uh, this is a whole chain which is happening. It's not so, 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 practice so, in malls for Amerika so so long, but uh, they will have practical applications. Okay. Yeah. No, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. No, hundred percent. It's this, a silo. This, this is why these conversations are are so important. This this connection between culture and emerging tech because tech's always going to come out. Tech's always going to connect to other tech and and do it rapidly. And once tech becomes even better, it becomes even more rapid. Right. So we as humans have to have to understand the implications of those things. And Sentil, thank you so much for joining us today. We're 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 a little bit over on time. Want to be respectful of your time and and, and everyone else's. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Mark does a great write up at the end of this. Please forward any links that are, are that are pertinent to that. And um yeah, and thanks again to Ripple W R I P P L E Marketing's on on demand talent platform. They've been supporting the show for quite a quite a long time. A platform for um uh 3,000 vetted solopreneurs to be organized and pointed towards your projects, whether it's a week, a month, or a year, or augmenting your staff. They're great. Check them out. Uh, Mark, quick shout out about the book club, and we'll send people along their way. Yeah, the book club, come and join us thinking on paper at XYZ. We're reading Clear Thinking by Shane Parrish. Next week is the last chapter. We will be announcing the new one. And I'm just going to leave on that last point that Sento mentioned, which made me think that, especially with AI, we can't look at deep fakes in a silo because they don't exist on their own. They are part of a massive interconnected system of AI driven technologies, which are all more and more day by day interacting with each other, causing ripples and effects across the ecosystem. And like you said, we need to have these conversations to at least try to understand just what the hell is going on. Amazing. Well, hey, guys, be curious, stay disruptive. Keep thinking on paper. See you next Bye. time. Bye-bye.